Okay, let me now turn on uh, Facebook. There we go. Okay, all right. We got it. Uh, yeah, this we're record. We're, we've got this meeting going on on uh, Facebook. And hello to everybody. This is our uh, Monday get together. Our pop up. It's a very simple show. We don't go through our whole thing of doing uh, all kinds of graphics and crap like that. We just do it direct to uh, to Facebook streaming off of Zoom. And uh, we invite uh, people to come here and talk with us. And uh, so far, we only have two people today, but we'll admit them and uh, we'll hope others uh, join us. Uh, here comes Edward Berger, uh, cartoon voice extraordinaire. Uh, That's he right. <laughs> Hello, Edward. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, that, uh, Shecky, correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't he look like he's wearing an Elmer Fudd style hat? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Edward is just a basic cartoon character that calls. That, that's <laughs> right. I don't really exist. I'm just in your computer. You're just in my computer. Well, here comes Steve Bender and Charlie Wallace. They're joining us uh, for our little Monday get together. And, uh, uh, hello there, Steve. How's everything downtown? I was downtown today, actually. Really? Where, where were you? I was on the 22nd Street and 2nd because I had to pick up Marjorie from her. She gets a spine, in, in, something shoved in her spine or whatever, and That's they good. put her under. And so they won't let her leave unless she right. has somebody taking her. Well, it's nice you went down and got her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unlike times in the past when you refused to do it. Uh, just, you know, <laughs> let's, let's just forget that, uh, that, uh, place that incident. Because especially she's going to call soon. And then, <laughs> you know, if you remind her. No, I figured better to say that before she was here. But, I'll, I'll, me, but now, that, now that I think of it, I think I'll remind her that I picked her up today. <laughs> and, and that should make up for something. Yeah, you should, should have given me a call. I would have walked over to say hello. The thing is that, oh, here she comes. Uh, uh, and also here comes the other she, ladies and gentlemen, Mandy. Um, anyway, um, hello, Mandy. How are you? Uh, no, I had to pick up Marjorie because she, they won't let her go unless she's got somebody to take her. Now, what I'm wondering is, suppose she says there is nobody. So I guess I'll just stay here for the rest of my life. No, they send, they arrange for a private ambulance, and then they send you the bill. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but couldn't you say I have a lift waiting outside? Yeah, that's Uber? what she says, but oh. they. They do. That's what I usually do, and I. Or and just I'm... walk, or just walk out after when no one's looking. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so I I picked her up today. And uh, uh, as uh, Steve Bender was so nice to point out, this kind of makes up for me not picking her up another time. <laughs> Where gonna... apparently that place didn't care that she was on her own. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that was Mount Sinai. <laughs> but they've got deep pockets. So. In two weeks' time, Alex, you have to do it again. Have you lost some weight, Steve? I have. Really? How, how much? I'm not that much since I saw you last. Maybe, you know, 10 pounds. But over the last two years, it's been 80 pounds. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I've got to go back to losing again. I, because after I had all that radiation and everything, or as my doctor now puts it, my prostate got fried. Uh -huh. uh, he wrote that in a note. Well, your prostate was fried a technical term <laughs> yeah but at your age what's the difference what you weigh if you just feel good i thought you were going to say what's the difference whether you have a prostate or not no 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 it's yeah. just where you go so crazy about food and what i'm eating it's like if you feel okay do it Shelly, tell me about it I know, when I went to my urologist, he stuck his finger up my ass, which he does, I think, because he enjoys it more than I do. Uh, uh, but he he shoves a finger up my ass and then he goes, oh, well, it's what I expect out of a prostate that's been radiated. It's flat. And I'm going, I used to have such a round, 
nice, maybe sometimes over large prostate. And now it's all the air's gone out of it and it's flat. You know, my you body. Don't a, you don't have a spare in the trunk? No. <laughs> That could be taken several ways, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, Mandy. Hello. How you doing? I, was, I sign off now. This is like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you stick around for this mess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we we I, I we I just brought it up, you know. Uh, and That's okay. Just, it's just the prostate. It's not, you know, the rest, <laughs> the rest of the equipment. I'm talking about the prostate, <laughs> which uh, every guy here has. Uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe not. I don't know what kind of work they've had done on them, you know. But. <laughs> you should have texted me. I would have come down to say hello. That would have been nice. So next time you're in the neighborhood, uh, get in touch. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll call and then I'll we'll go have, some lunch have lunch somewhere. Yeah. 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 Then you owe us one more trip up here. I know, I know, I know. I have not forgotten. <laughs> oh, boy. Hello, uh, Mike Chisholm. How are you up in Canada? Uh, I've been told my prostate is robust. Is that a good thing? Is robust? <laughs> I'm doing well, Alex. How are you? How's oh. everyone doing? Shecky, how was the cruise? The cruise is until June. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were. Oh, okay. I thought you were just coming back from one. Oh no. No, there was a Christmas cruise, but that's five, four or five months ago. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, I got my wires crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking, I was looking at the schedule. I think I might be able to, they have full internet on the ship. I might be able to call in that Monday. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's correct. But do they charge you for the full internet or is that no. free? No, it, on this cruise, it's free booze free internet, free this, free that. So we'll get you calling dead drunk, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a glass of vodka in my hand and I'll try to get on, you know. Maybe we, maybe we can see him sitting fully straight up instead of lying back. <laughs> well, I'm thinking maybe I'll be up on the um, sun, quote, sun deck, sun deck calling in. Yeah, yeah. You're going where this time? Uh, wait a minute. I, I can actually keep the paper right here. That first part of the cruise is, let's see, you fly to Prague, and from Prague, you get the ship in Passau, uh -huh. then you go to Linz, then mm -hmm. Dernstein, mm -hmm. then you spend two days in Vienna, then Bratislava, and you end up in Budapest. Budapest. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. How close is that to the Ukraine? That part isn't the next cruise is closer. It's closer. Oh, well, the next cruise, when's that going to be? It's a back-to-back. -back. It's a different ship. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're doing two cruises. Yeah, I'm doing a back-to-back. -back. Oh, okay. And yeah. that one are towns either even I've never heard of. Really? Uh -huh. but, but it's the one that ends up in Transylvania. Oh, all right. All right. Good. Where they're giving me four free nights at a hotel in Transyl, you know, in um, where was that? Yeah, uh, but that's the hotel nobody wants to stay at because it's haunted. <laughs> well, make it back. Oh, well, what did you say, Charlie? I don't. I don't. Go on As Alex to knows, it. I paid a very large check to the government this weekend for taxes. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, it's, yeah, you, so you paid your taxes. Hey, t today I found out uh, what was it? is today tax day? Yeah, yeah. See, because I guess the fifteenth of the holidays. Halloween. Yeah, it was Good Friday. Oh, okay. Good Friday, yeah. Passover. And in Boston, apparently it's tomorrow because they have some weird holiday on Monday, which I'm not even sure what it is. No. Oh. Well, let me check my calendar. <laughs> in Boston, it's the day after the Boston Marathon. Or Monday, so this might be considered a holiday, even though it says there's something in Boston where they get an extra day. Patriots Day. Yeah, yeah. I hear the, the IRS is hiring yeah. too. The IRS is hiring. Yeah. What are they hiring for? People, they don't have enough process, employees. People to process the the, the claims, the the tax returns that are coming in. 
Yeah, they need help. My mom hadn't gotten her refund from 2020. Wow. Really? Right. Yeah. She just got it? I had to pay for 21. And that sucked to have to pay when I know they owe her so much money. Because she just oh. hadn't gotten it. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, we, we, uh, my lawyer, my lawyer, my accountant, uh, did a, def- what do you call it? Uh, deferred. Well, I do an extension. I did the, I, I made the payments and now I'm good till October to f- actually file. Well, he said we didn't owe any money. So he just filed for the extension. <coughs> and uh, so who, I don't care, you know, extend me forever. I don't, you know. Well, you know, I think I said to you yesterday, it's like, I don't like paying this kind of money, but it means I made money. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Exactly. But here's the thing. Uh, uh, And uh, I have for years said that I think we should do away with the federal income tax for the average person and just raise taxes on businesses a bit more. And take up the slack there because the majority of tax money that comes into the IRS doesn't come from the individual tax uh, uh, payer. Um, it it comes from companies. How and about so, companies that pay no taxes at all? Uh, no, Alex. No? 8% of the tax money that comes in comes from corporations. 8 8%. That's all. Wow. 92% comes mm-hmm. from us. Oh, really? Yes, I thought it was the other way around, but I guess I guess we aren't. No, because they they know how to take, you know, deductions, mm-hmm. and you know, we just opened a new car factory. Let's say so now cool. we're gonna you know take that yeah. off our taxes. Or Mandy, whatever. what were you gonna say? Well, I, I was gonna say I had to pay a lot and because it was all part of my ex-husband's business. Blah blah blah. But my, I don't think that. Um, seniors i think at some point i'm thinking why does my mother have to pay y'all exactly Exactly. yeah well what bothers me is i take social security right and only a little bit of it it, wait a minute wait a minute that's taxed they tax that they shouldn't tax that no it's a small portion but it shouldn't be taxed yeah and even her retirement her retirement's tax she just didn't have enough taken out so right right well, well what to, about well, I I, I, maybe they got rid of the death the death tax when your a relative dies and they take half their estate yeah yeah uh Verin, you were saying something my wife has to pay a uh, federal income tax on her annuity that she gets from working for the government for 30 years <laughs> the state of kentucky does not charge income tax on that wow yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, um, she worked for the state of Georgia. So with Georgia, she doesn't have anything. She didn't get a refund or oh, but it's all it's just the federal well, part. All I know with my union, the only decent thing my union ever did was when I reached a certain age, I think it was 65. I don't know, maybe uh, well, Shecky would know he's 65, but uh, I, they, I didn't have to pay t- um, uh, union dues anymore. I was considered mm-hmm. a senior in the union and uh, it was gratis. Well, I think it should be the same way with with taxes for people over 65. I think that people over 65 shouldn't have to pay taxes. Right. It's ridiculous. I mean, we did. You did for how many years, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 oh, yeah, you're going to get Social Security. Well, suppose you die at 66. I guess you're on the losing end of that proposition. Right. You know, right. so I mean, I just think they should say, hey, at 65, no more taxes. Go, go yep. make a million dollars. We don't care. No taxes. Right. But that's not how the government money. works. We have so many crooks in government. Look at New York State. Yeah. Every politician is a crook. Well, every. Well, oh, exactly. Can every... you give me the name of one of an honest <clears throat> senator, <throat> representative, or something? Well, I'll run, and then you can say I know one legitimate. <laughs> although I will try and find a way to. Cheap. That's a great way. You would that? find a way, you know, like the guy who was the lieutenant governor who just oh, lost God. his job because, you know, he gave Alex a sweetheart deal. Well, what's, and interesting, then, you know, it, what's interesting is the people who voted in the last gubernatorial election have nobody left in office that they voted for. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the um, former chairman of the House of Representatives in jail 
um, what's his name, the head of the Senate, dead, but they were both impeached. Andrew Cuomo, impeached. Yeah. Who, no, he wasn't him. impeached. No. He was not impeached. Well, he, he resigned. He resigned. Yeah. And then it turned out they didn't have anything to charge him with. You know, so he should have stayed where he was. He gave well, up. He, again, it. I would vote for him tomorrow, but he's a crook, too. Yeah, but he, but he, he, you know somebody somebody said once. Well, don't you know he's a crook? I know what it was. I uh, uh, the Beatles had taken on uh, Alan Klein as their as their uh, business manager. Their manager, and I said to I think it was I think I said to uh, uh, George Harrison, but everybody says he's a crook, and his answer was last year. He made me, and he gave me a figure, so many millions and millions of dollars by getting my, my published and so on. So if he steals from me, I don't care, you know? Uh, and, and, and somebody else said, he's our crook, no. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, if he's your crook, if, if it's Cuomo and he's your crook, fine. I yeah. would vote him back again if he ran in a heartbeat. Yeah, I think the, yeah. I think get elected in a heartbeat. Well, I said to you yesterday on the phone, I would vote for whoever the Republican is if it's not Giuliani's son, Patty's son, rather than this Haku woman who's giving a billion dollars to build a stadium in Buffalo. Because she's from uh, Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's good for civic pride. I was reading today. It's good for civic pride in Buffalo that they have a brand new stadium. <laughs> paid for by your tax dollars we're getting too close to talking politics here okay we're getting a little too don't we think we're getting a little too close when he, yeah. well did you see what the federal judge in miami said today or in florida what no masks on airplanes transit trains or anything starting way <laughs> now well, did you hear about the law in Texas where you can get a gun? No. Question. Wait a minute. We're getting this is getting too. No, that, that part wasn't politics. That part yeah. was Georgia. Or permits are required. Or yeah, you know, no permits, no license, no nothing. No. Just walk in. Is that nationwide that mask thing? No. It wasn't until today, apparently. Oh man, is it a yeah, federal California next week? I'm very excited about this. That in theory, I, if I go on an airplane, I don't have to wear a mask. In theory, if you get on an airplane and you don't have to wear a mask, will you still wear one? I probably oh. would, though, as you know, and I hate wearing a mask, but I probably would. Well, who loves wearing a mask? I don't like wearing a condom either, but sometimes you got to. <laughs> Batman loves wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got three hours. It's on HBO Max right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it on Max? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it started like kids this morning. Yeah, all three what? hours of it. Oh, God. Yeah. What? God. Yes, uh, Vernon. Getting back to the income tax, it's my understanding, and I may be wrong, but it's my understanding when the federal income tax was first created, it was supposed to be a tax on your excess income. In other words, over and above what it takes for you to feed, house, and clothe your family. Mm -hmm. It ain't that now. That's no. why you get that deduction. Uh, yeah, that's your yeah, that's your standard you deduction. I remember I remember the time when you could deduct all interest on yeah. sales and things like that. So that when you bought something like a car, you could take off the taxes that you paid, the federal taxes you paid on that. Yep. You can't do that anymore. And, and uh, I always found that a great incentive to buy stuff, you know? Well, uh, they, also, they also limit your property tax now and your, um, your state tax. So I used, I used to write off, let's just say 20, 25 grand. It's now 10,000 as the ceiling. So no matter how much you are gonna write off, you can't, it stops at 10. So I'm being taxed now on an extra 50 and 20,000 a year for nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's because the taxes out here are pretty high. Property tax. Well, here's, what, here's what I never got. See, I mean, this is the thing that always bothered me. I go to a place for a job and they say, okay, we want to hire you, Alex. We're going to pay you $100,000 a year. All right. 
Well, that isn't a hundred thousand dollars. No, fifty of it's going to the government. Yeah. yeah. So by the time I'm through, I'm not getting a hundred thousand. I, you know, they should say to me, "You're going to get a hundred thousand dollars," and that, you know, no matter before what, taxes. If, huh? before taxes, bef, bef, after taxes, yeah. after taxes, yeah. Yeah, so you don't get that, you know. It's I, like buy, it's like buying a ticket from Ticketmaster. Oh my yeah. god! The ticket costs yeah. seventy five dollars. By the time you're through with it, it's one hundred and twenty five dollars for nothing. Yeah, it's another exactly. fifteen dollars for the. I always love the convenience fee for them emailing me the ticket. The convenience. Right. No, they don't. They don't even mail it to me anymore. You just get no. It's good, but yeah. it's called yeah. the convenience yeah. fee. That For an online ticket, the convenience fee is twenty two fifty. Well, Airbnb. By the, by, by the way, I heard I heard a thing today where they uh, on on uh, uh, somewhere where they said I mentioned it to Marjorie that uh, the uh, the IRS prefers if you file um, by online. Yeah. You know, e file. And I'm thinking to myself. Wasn't there a time when they didn't want you to e-file? You know, they made a big deal about if you e-filed, you had to do something extra, do this or whatever. Now, please e-file. Um, this is the problem I had with my mom's return because last year in 2020 is when my dad passed away and I wasn't able to file it online. It was something to do with somebody is deceased during that year. They won't, you have to just mail it in. Mm -hmm. When I called about it, this woman yelled at me and said, we are in a pandemic, ma'am. Did you not know? You should not even be calling us about this yet. <laughs> and it had been several months I filed it. I just, that was awfully like, nasty of them. She was very curt with me um, when I just said, I was just making sure you got it because I mailed it in. But I do know that she just hasn't gotten a refund yet. I mean, I just I, they're behind though. I really I don't know. I, I've heard I've never gotten anybody when I've talked to the government one way or another. I've never gotten anybody nasty and curt like that. That was unprofessional. Yeah, but now it's a yeah. pandemic. Oh, haven't you heard there's a pandemic <laughs> going on? No. Yes, don't call. Don't call. This was last year. This wasn't 2020, but it was for 2020. But when I called, them, I guess I filed it like at the end of March and then I called about the end of July. And she said, ma'am, we are in a pandemic. <laughs> you, should said, you, you should have said no. You should have said no. I haven't heard. Oh, well, you, uh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. What is this? Really? Thing? Really? What kind is it? Oh, look who's here. Brian Neary. He was on vacation. I don't know if he's still I thought he was on a cruise. Yeah, I thought maybe, but maybe yeah. he's not hey. anymore. No, hey. he's home. He's home. How was your cruise, Brian? <laughs> it was great. It was great. Yeah, really good. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you went where? I uh, drove down to L.A. and then did, uh, from there, we went to uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mazatlan, and then, <laughs> and then. Uh, you go to Ensenada? No, we, we cruised. Ew. And uh, Cabo, Cabo, yeah. Cabo. I've done that cruise twice. It's an awesome one. Well, yeah. you were in Cabo, weren't you, Alain? Yes, I was. With Along Mandy. With, with Mandy. Along with what, what's her name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> we don't want anybody to know you went on vacation, Mandy. She doesn't want. Yeah, she doesn't last want to we had, it was three days. Big whoops. <laughs> big whoops. <laughs> but, but do, <laughs> do you realize we have, uh, let's see here. We have 11 people here on the panel, and three of them have been to Cabo within the last year. <laughs> yep. well, Marjorie, guess where we're going? No. <laughs> Good. You got to fly out of the West Coast so you can come over here. No good. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I'm I'm yeah but they, they, they did really good, I think. On, and uh, I think uh, Shaka can probably say the same, but it was Norwegian and they did a really good job of, you know, we had the test with a doctor on the call uh, in person to show here's where we're testing. We had to show her the thing and and they did that. They did back. They made sure we had vaccination cards, and uh, they did a lot of safety stuff for us when we were on there. And then, yeah, I, I felt very safe though. Which cruise? And I wore my mask on the cruise. Yeah, and, they're, and, they're, and you keep hearing me saying I hate doing this, but I did it. Yeah, and there was a lot of people wore masks. They made us wear masks uh, when we when we went in. So from curbside onto the ship, we had to wear a mask through the whole process. Uh, it was Norwegian Airlines it, or Norwegian, sorry, Norwegian Cruise Lines, and it was a. Uh, 
the Bliss, which is one of the newer ships, it has the has the go kart track on the back and laser oh, tanks. Cool. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do they have the skating rink in the basement or wherever the hell it is? <laughs> no, that's, you that's know, you know, I'm doing my test. Make sure I, I'm okay. I guess after. it's another reason I don't want to take a cruise. I mean, I saw a thing. Did I mention this last week? This documentary about the the, the something of the sea, the largest boat. Yeah, boat. One, one, wonder Royal of the Caribbean. Wonder of the seas. And it's they, the Royal Caribbean boat. And they the had Royal. five thousand people on this ship, and I, yep. they're showing them on the deck, and I'm going. I'm claw- I don't want that kind of. I want to get away from crowds, not be with some and want a, a, a crowd that's confined that can't get out of that space. I mean, you, you don't have five thousand people next to you. It's not like a concert. The concert, you know, inside concert, is much worse. It's a huge ship. You can be by yourself with the places yeah. if you want. Yeah, they're floating. Cereal. You know, again, I know places on those ships where no one else sits. Yeah, yeah and that's where I go. Yeah. Yeah, on the yeah. side of it with the barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you, my June cruise, it'll be like 120 people on the ship. It'll be fine. Well, that's fine. But five thousand? Are you out of your f- goddamn? No, mind? but you don't. You don't. I I have to admit, I've been on one with maybe three thousand. You don't really see yeah. them. Yeah, you know? yeah. This one had four thousand. 1,600 crew members, which you don't see all 1,600, and then you had 3,200 people there. And the biggest times that we're in a crowd was when we're going on the ship. After that, even when you walk through the the pool area, I mean, you're on the boat, the boat, the wind's going everywhere. And everybody's been vaccinated. Everyone just got tested. I mean, and every time you went to the went to eat, no matter where it was, whatever restaurant or, where, or even the buffets, you had to wash. They they had people there washy washy, and you had to wash. And uh, they had well, Perel, we've you know, they got had dinner, there. we've got liquor, and the infection. No complimentary. Well, I, no, I'm even the asking bars, myself right now. So far, so good. Just like, you, oh my God, there are too many people in this bar. You know. If you drink enough, there's no virus that's going to live in you anyway. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. oh, find a good bartender is the big secret. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> you yeah, know, you atrium... 20 bucks or her 20 bucks at the top. And then they yep. know, you know, they and know what you want. And, you know, yeah. it's fine. They take, yeah. you know, you walk in and they hand you your whatever you're drinking. Yeah. So why yeah. don't you why don't you ask Marjorie and I what it's like now that she's no longer working and she's home every day? Oh, it must be glorious. Yes. The I love finding yeah, but she was home the last two years, more or less. I am enjoying every second of it. No, you're not. <laughs> I love it to, to take the walks on uh on the Facebook Live. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show us that that door's not locked behind you, Alex. What? <laughs> Tell us that you didn't lock the door. <laughs> lock yourself in. No, I, we've been. Uh, I think uh, it's been going okay. She's been nasty a couple of days. Come on. And what about you? <clears throat> I mean, if you talk about your nose or your or your hurts or your pains or your aches, I'm going to be nasty. I'm saying that up front. Yeah. How's your hand doing? <laughs> <laughs> My hand hurts. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite hand. My heart aches. Well, is it an ache? But does it really hurt? Well, yeah. I'm not so sure. No. It, it's achy sometimes. It's ache like. And you give me an update whether I want it or not. No, I think you're because you're my wife and you care about my health. Not every five minutes. Oh, okay. And there and there's my test. So I just what's your te- <laughs> what's that a test for? Is that a P oh, test? He's not pregnant. He's negative. He's not pregnant. <laughs> no, well, what is that? No, but what is that? What is that test? Is that for COVID? Yeah, it's an antigen test for COVID. Yeah. So I did the kids had them. They took them this morning before they went to school and they were fine. I just took mine. I have the day off, but I took mine just now. But the antigen test. Now, how is that different from sticking it up your nose? No, that is. That is. I stuck it up my nose when you guys were talking. It's the home test. Yeah, it's the home test. It's the home test. Okay. And, it's the same thing. And how do, how, do, how do, you're taking the home test, but I, my question is, it has to go in a certain amount into your nose, right? You just need to get some sample, just some, 
Yeah. In, in other words, you don't have to go as deep. Some of these people like, oh, you know, yeah. it, and it actually was kind of not pleasant. Well, yeah. now they have like a breath test for COVID. As yeah, opposed to that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not going to, I would not plan on that. It, and it, it comes back like you don't have COVID, but your breath stinks. You're drunk. <laughs> you're drunk. Don't drive. Yeah, you had too much garlic last night. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> when this first started happening back in, uh, you know, whatever, a couple months ago, they uh, we went to Kaiser to have the, the one done at the drive through. And they went in so far, I lost the 1980s for a couple of weeks. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what was going on, what, how far in they went. Well, my uh, my doctor for the for the eyes, he did it in his office and he went way up there too. It was like, I don't he, know. Yeah. You know, I don't think they do anymore. I think that was at the yeah. beginning because they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. 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 They even even our company was going high. Now they've lowered it. Yes, Marjorie. Yes. Even when you do a home test and you test positive, it's not reported to the states. So no one knows the exact number of how many people tested positive. Yeah. Yeah, but if I took a home test and tested positive, I would go somewhere to have an actual test. Mm, yes, yeah, you would. A lot of people wouldn't. That's right. Yeah. See, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just worried that uh, we're going to have another outbreak, bad outbreak, because oh, oh, there's uh, a breaking news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it seems like everybody's getting kind of cavalier about this. Oh, we're tired of it. We'll we'll just let people not wear masks now. Well, I don't know if that's the answer I want to hear. I want to hear that. Hey, all clear. It's safe uh, to go in the you water. You might never hear that in your lifetime, no matter how long. Think, I don't think you will. Well, nope. in that case, I'm going to wear a mask when I get on a plane. I just don't. That's even fine. Though, even, no I'll tell you, you, you know what happened today when I went to pick her up? I walk into this office. Okay, so she said, I have to walk back out again. We have to sign you in. Now we have to uh, take your temperature. Okay, do you have uh, uh, your card? So I show them my my pass, you know, my Excelsior pass. And it says, I have four, you know? And then she says, well, can you now send it to our email address? And I'm, I'm just picking Marjorie up, yeah. you know? Well, in theory, you should be able to walk in the door and she should be able to just walk out the door. Yeah. Well, in theory, he shouldn't have to walk in the door. I should be able to walk out by myself. And say, I you know, my husband is waiting for me outside in a cab or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, uh, they they were they wanted me to mail it to them. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Later on, I figured out how to do it. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, why why am I going to email you my my card? Here it is. Can't you see it? You know. And now it's in two weeks' time. You have to do it again. In two weeks' time. Yeah. I have to go back down again. Yeah. Another thirty-five dollar lift. No, Steve will pick her up. Put her in a cab and send her home. Alex, I can bring her out and put her in a cab. Please, please pick her up. Please yeah. pick her up from anything she asks ever in her life. Well, please. you're how you're how many blocks from twenty second and second? It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm fifteenth and fifth. Oh, oh, okay. See, so he, he we even walk down there. Yeah, I would walk, walk down, down put, put her in a cab, get her out, and put her in a cab. <laughs> yeah. I'm rent a cab, my God, you guys. Or say he, he could it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll I'll do it next time. We'll all meet down there and uh, go out and have lunch. Yeah, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to go to Sweden in uh, at the end of uh, beginning of May, May first. Supposed to fly to Sweden, sixteen hours in a plane. And oh. how, how long are you going to be there? And is what is it for business? Yeah, it's for a week. Uh, we're doing a big project there, and they want my my expertise. So yeah. I'm, but are I'm you gonna... stopping in some airport? Because otherwise, if it was a direct flight, it shouldn't take that long. Yeah, you know, they eight hours maybe. You know. Yeah, yeah, they have a couple options. So I'm filling my my travel person has to call me back. But I think I'm gonna sew on a, a mask. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll wear a mask for sure. Put a snap in and just take it off. Well, yeah. you know, uh, um, there is a question about the air quality in airplanes. They say that it circulated more than anywhere else you would go and that uh if the the, the uh yeah, they say that about the subway too i'm not buying it <laughs> well they say the subway doesn't have people that shoot it up anymore either you know so 
Mm-hmm. It, co- it costs. And they don't have surveillance cameras that seem to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, airpl- airplanes have HEPA filters in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The plane, and it sure. costs the money to circulate the air in the plane. They have to use gas because it's and the engines actually run the fans that you know keep the plane. Uh, oh, I thought you said they pipe gas into the plane. Oh, no. thought, <laughs> what is this, Ger- German Airlines? Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you take a shower first, then you get out on the You plane. take a shower. <laughs> and the cruise ship, too. The cruise ship, they said that they had HEPAs, that they did re, you know, restructuring of their whole filtration system. Shecky, what what, what, uh, what do you go on? What cruise line? Well, the next one is... Uh, i got to pull it up again. It's... um, The first leg is on UniWorld, and then the second leg is... Ammo waterways. Uh, yeah, I kept walking by when we were going off the ship to the cities, and people were just sitting in there lounging, reading, and stuff. I said, "Oh, that, that's Shecky right there." That's Shecky. <laughs> well, that's me. That's what I did in the Christmas cruise. I never got off the boat. Shecky gets some good reading done. <laughs> you know. Yeah, for five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I admit it. You know. <laughs> But, but you know, food, food, I read food. people that none of you have ever heard of, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good food. It's beautiful scenery every day. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. So no, I enjoyed my, I had a good time. I'm not complaining that, you know, I think I had mentioned before, there are a couple of ports that wouldn't let us dock because five idiots had, you know, tested positive. But I was not going into those ports anyway, so I didn't care. Yeah, well, good, good. I, you know, how many times do you need to walk around Old San Juan? I've seen yeah. everything in Old San Juan. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Now, what world. happens if between now and, say, the cruise you're going on, Shecky, all of a sudden there's a major surge oh. in COVID? Well, I'm totally insured. Oh, okay. And the cruise line to cancel... Or if I became uncomfortable, my travel agent will make up an excuse that I test positive for COVID. Oh, okay. And I'll get my money back. Yeah, that's how ours was. Ours actually, we had we had paid for. I paid for Christmas night, uh, two thousand nineteen for wow. June twenty twenty. So when you know this big spike hit, yeah, uh, Norwegian said we'll either refund you the money or you can keep it on credit, and we're going to postpone everything. When we start up, you can use it. So I did that um, because I didn't know I could get my money back. But uh, (laughs) I I did that. And then all of a sudden, when they're coming to get the cruises back going, they're giving 35% off of everything. So I have a huge credit still uh, that I can use on another cruise. So actually, I I made out pretty well. Yeah. So no, I'm totally 100% insured. Even Mm. the airline is insured that if I didn't fly, I get that money back too. Yeah, yeah. So, well, good. Uh, yes, uh, Vernon. We, uh, my wife and I had a cruise scheduled for May of 2020 yeah. on, Prince, on Princess Cruise Line. And it was going to start in LA and it's going through the Panama Canal and end up in Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. Well, we had already paid for it and everything. And when COVID hit, we, they gave us two options. They said, we, you can keep all of the money on your account, in which case we would give you 150% of that on your next cruise, wow. 150%. Wow. Or we'll give you a full refund and we'll give you a 25% credit on your next cruise. Mm. Oh, we got the full refund. <laughs> that, that was really nice. Well, we still have a 25% credit waiting yeah, that's, for that's our next cruise. But that was yeah. very nice. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, I think- they understand that they need those people back. You know, that's a big scare for everybody. And they have to have those people have secure or, you know, feel confident to come back. So that's why they give, give a lot of discounts. Yeah. yeah. But I like yeah. it, man. That we have, you know, when, and checking those, man, the crews, the, all the people on there are so nice and so friendly and always willing to help you and take care of you and, you know, go get you stuff all the time. Marjorie, Marjorie won't go on a cruise. She just won't. Oh, you my know. wife won't either. Mm. Sometime, Jackie, I, love I might join you for one of them. You could share a cabin with me. Other people we know, no. I think, yeah. I think yeah. we should. I think we should have a Monday 
cruise, you know. We'll all go oh my God, I'm in. That okay, sounds great. Cruise. There we go. I would, I would be in for that. Okay. Alex Bennett Cruise, world famous Alex Bennett. Right. Live on the ship. And by the way, if you get all these people in here, Alex, you could probably sail for free you because for you're bringing free. a group of people. You were. Yeah, but probably. Think, yeah, what happened? What happened was is years ago they came to me. You know, they do the always do these cruise these the uh, rock and roll cruise or yeah, whatever. Or or this was going to be the Alex Bennett cruise, and it was you know some people wanted to sell place on their boats. So well, it's also you know. part of it is Alex will talk for an hour. Let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. and visit right. with his little fans, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just figured I was against it because I didn't want to be stuck on a boat for five days with anybody that would be a fan of mine. <laughs> yeah, but you can, again, I, I would say you could find a place during the day to sit out and no one's going to know you're there. Mm -hmm. I suppose. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I mean, I, one night when we had a thing where we did a thing of a, a, a party on the bay for our uh, our uh, listener appreciation party on the bay mm -hmm. and people could just sign up for it and we took them all out for about three hours around the bay and so on on one of those boats and i was stuck on there for three hours yeah with, they're small with my fans yeah, and it's small. yeah but after after the first day they don't really give a damn that you're there yeah i i guess I guess, you know, but I mean, all I'm saying is three hours with them was more than I could take, you know, because yeah. it's not like you can get off. You can't jump off the boat and just say, that's it. I can't take this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can. Well, you can get to a port and say, get me a flight home. Bye. You know, and the then last, the last cruise I was on, I was hanging out with the uh, second city folk. They bring on the second city guys to uh, and gals to entertain and all that. And I made friends with them, some of them, because I'm a stand-up fan. And uh, I said to them, I said, okay, so... Yeah, but like, that's not stand-up. That's improv. Well, th well, there's both. There's both on there. Like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, some of them are stand-ups and some of them do that as well. But hanging out with them, I'm like, okay, so what do you guys do during the day? Like, aren't you scared of what you're talking about here? And they're like, yeah. oh, no, there's places, there's places we can go. Yeah, there's crew areas that nobody can yeah. get. It's not even crew areas. They're just, like, again, when I say, when I sit yeah. out on the deck... Yeah, big ship. I just know places that there are like five other people sitting there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I, what I used to say was, uh, radio is the lowest form of show business. <laughs> and if you think about it, it really is. I mean, I can't think of anything below this. Is that just because you don't see your face, or why do you say that? Why is it lower I, I, than it, improv? Uh, oh, uh, no, improv is right there. One okay. notch above radio. All right. Really? And, and, you know, the reason I dislike <laughs> improv is because improv isn't improv. It's a lie. Because all these people do constant improv. Give us a uh, give us a, 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 a place. Give us a, you know, a profession. And what they do is they then pick ones they already know, and then they do the bit they've done a hundred times before. Mm. And then they pass it off as improv. One of the most interesting things I ever saw, and I love Robin Williams, but I was um, at uh, the Catch a Rising Star and it was late night, we were leaving and he was sitting at the bar. So we said, he's not here to drink, let's stay. And he was going to do his big show at the Metropolitan Opera House and he wanted to you know, go through material. Not so he came out at midnight and he did like an hour and a half and it seemed like brilliant <laughs> improv. He's going into women's pocketbooks and doing stuff with their shit. Oh, it's all set up. Yeah, I saw him two weeks later at Princeton. It was the exact same, like word for word. Wow. The genius is making it look improvised for him. And the genius yeah. is making it look like he didn't steal it. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that too. You know, I, I'm going to say something and admit something here, and everybody's going to groan at me. Uh, Robin never made me laugh. I well, never... you know, you know me, I always call him and I apologize for this he was a chimp a chimp yeah but i mean he would come just, on our show and he'd run around and everyone would start he, screaming oh boy robin's running around the audience yeah I, I think he brought a kind of intelligence to a kind of low form of comedy um 
I don't know. I mean, he's not my favorite, but yeah, he's no, a talented, uh, talented guy. Uh, well, I I tell people, tell me something funny that he said in his act. And they can't come back with anything. No, because as I say, he would, like on our show, he'd just run around and, you know. It's right. not like memorable yes. lines. It's well, he, oh. made album. He, made, oh. he made albums. Oh. You have to go back and listen to Throbbing Python of Love or, you know, one of his albums. Oh, look, scary. an ashtray. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he you was know, spastic. And I'll still say, and I don't care for him, Jay Leno was the, one of the best stand-ups I ever oh, saw. Oh, I agree with you. I totally agree. In his day, not oh, his back day. in the eighties. Well, what yeah. happened was years ago, uh, he was playing at the Frost Amphitheater at Stanford, and David Feldman and I decided because I could get in there to go down and see the show. So we went and sat in the lawn. Out comes Jay Leno. He does to begin with. He did two hours. Wow. wow. And what he did wow. is he did something brilliant, and and Feldman said it was the most brilliant thing he'd ever seen. He would come out for the first like 15 minutes of his act and do topical material. So you felt that it was all new. And then no, then he go into the standard then, then he would slide into the standard act and you never knew it. Super you know? smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and and we were both in awe of his ability at being a stand-up, and especially because we looked at our watch and went, that was two hours. You yeah. Know? You know, so whatever I might think of him personally, right? Great, I saw him at Carnegie Hall, great show, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, I just he just never made me laugh all that much, you know. And uh, and the other night we were watching um, um, Bill Maher, and I looked at Marjorie after it was over and said, He's really a terrible comic, his stand up, stand up, worse now than he was. What'd you say? He's worse now than he was like 10 years ago. Yeah, but I mean, what we watched, I'm going, there's nothing really funny here. I didn't laugh for the whole hour. No. You know, and and uh, uh, and it was some stupid material. I mean, I just, I found it, you know, I found him not funny. He uh, was on Rogan a couple of weeks back and I thought he was flat the whole show. Yeah, well, it was on with Rogan. Uh, but, you know. Uh, you know, he's yeah, he he. I I just don't like his show that much. Marjorie likes it, you know. He's gotten, he's I, like gotten, the, I like the regular Friday night uh, one, not his stand up. Yeah, he's gotten to think very highly of himself, mm. which is yeah. you know, more and more so. I think he blows think, his own horn. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, the worst the, the worst the thing that I a relationship I ever had with any comic at any one given time was with Bill Maher. And uh, he called me, we were doing uh, HBO's One Night Stand, and I was doing the warm-up, okay, for it, and, and being the host, bringing people in and so on, because I was also working as an announcer on the first year. And, uh, he, you know, after about a week, I guess I had, had I have had kind of an act going, you know, and he, he calls me and he says, I want to, Mr. Marr wants to see you in his, uh, in his uh, dressing room. So I go up there and there's Bill and he says, hey, you're Alex? I said, yeah. He says, you're the host of the show? I said, yeah. You go out and you do five minutes or 10 minutes. I said, I'm, I'm, I go out to warm up the crowd. And I also, one of the things that I did was do stuff to get them to kind of laugh a little bit and to applaud a little bit. So they had wild tracks that they could use in the, in the show to go between we did a we did two shows a night of the same act and then they would go back and forth between the best bits and and to seam them together they would use applause and so on so i got those tracks for people and i said yeah he says uh, do you do any any political and i said uh well yeah i do i say you know in order to get people to applaud i say how many here like the president and they applaud and i say how many of you like don't like Bob and they boo and so on and so forth and he says don't do political. I do political. Oh. And I, I just looked at him for a second and I said, listen, you're making $20,000 tonight to do this show. I'm getting 160 bucks for doing this show tonight. <laughs> Follow me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> <Walked out. laughs> 
you know, yeah, back, you know, in my back in when I was doing stand up in the eighties and hanging out with a lot of comics, his reputation was it has an insufferable person. I mean, everyone, oh, no, he was one of the, he won, he may still be, but he was one of the most hated comics yeah, among no, no, comics, no. among yeah. comics. Yeah. Among comics. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I didn't ever knew him, but I He's always suffering. heard from everyone. Well, that that what he did with me was the kind of insufferable quality he had that made everybody dislike him intensely. Now I don't know if it's still true, but I imagine it is. You know, and when and Steve, I, Steve, you're like six six, right? Yeah, six six, and you were doing comedy. Wow. Yeah, the microphone stand goes up. <laughs> but one, of, one of my favorite speaking of tall guys doing comedy one of my favorite guys was tree when i used to see him on, on your show all the time and yeah. he uh I, I liked him he he and i you know he did this this routine he did like part of it like the first five or ten minutes he was very much macho he's like big yeah. tall looked like a biker guy shaved head white guy you know and very much you know Mm -hmm. like a biker guy and then all of a sudden he would stop and he would do the he would whip out a fan and he would start fanning himself and he'd do like this whole feminine act <laughs> yeah so hysterical i love that guy yeah and um, his name the reason I, I i warmed up to him is that somebody said do you want to have this comedian on who what's his name tree <laughs> <laughs> i went is he funny? He says, with well, a name like Tree, they got to be funny. You know, <laughs> you got to have something going for you. But no, he used the name Tree. And I uh, I, I always liked him. He was great. Is he still around, Alex? Do you know? Or? I have seen that he exists, uh, but I don't know if he's still doing stand up or not. You know, yeah, I haven't seen him anywhere. Yeah. Okay. I, was supposed to go, I was supposed to go see Larry Bubbles Brown and, uh, and uh, Steele, Johnny Steele on Wednesday, but they, they moved the show for out two weeks or something so yeah hopefully i'll get to see him yeah sorry guys i gotta go i gotta got, go get adrian oh you gotta go get adrian yeah. oh yeah you're just uh, your new ball and chain adrian yeah <laughs> so, she had ice cream my three ice creams every dinner she had like so much sugar she was so <laughs> hyper the whole trip oh my god i took her phone away i had oh my god <laughs> Yeah, she, she well, was. Listen, let me just ask you a quick question before you go, though. If you didn't want her to get bouncing off the wall, couldn't you give her sugar free ice cream? She wouldn't know the difference, would she? They, they have they have chocolate, vanilla, and swirl. Right. And, and then they had, they had all like the, they had like all the, uh, yeah, the hard stuff to take out, too. So, well, they had the soft serve. You know. Yeah. Soft serve. You, take, you take it yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> I made the mistake of saying you can eat whatever you want when you're on the trip. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I'll, I'll see you guys. Okay. Bye bye, bye, Brian. Bye, everybody. Everybody wave goodbye to Brian. Yeah, Happy bye, to be back. Brian. Okay. Uh, there he goes. But so speaking of stand up, that we were watching a lot of Gilbert this week. I mean, yeah. My God. My yeah. God. We were watching the roast, the roast of George Takei. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. There, there is no possibility that anybody could do that today and have anything like a career. And it was so funny. And George Takai is crying with laughter mm -hmm. at the gay jokes Gilbert's telling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it's unbelievable how funny he was. Well, you, yeah. I don't have to tell you that. Well, yeah. Gilbert's dead, but... Alex Bennett is still alive? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that, that interview you did, I saw over the weekend with Gilbert. Yeah, that was great. Was great. Yeah, that was oh. great. That was great. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, great. we loved him. He was that. on Rogan uh, a month or two ago, or maybe three or four months. But now I think about it, and I mean, it was awesome because it was three hours. They went through his entire career, and they went back and forth. And I kicked myself because he was uh, at the end. He was plugging cameo, and and I wish I wish I would have yeah. put the three hundred bucks down to get him to do a cameo to say my name. That is awesome that you have that, Alex. That's really cool. I have several different cuts of it too. I mean, oh, that's great. It, it, what he did. <laughs> to me, was uh, it, that was his that was his catchphrase for me. If I was walking, I one time I was walking down Fifth Avenue, and on the other side of the street, I guess was was Gilbert, and he spotted me, and from across the street, he yelled out, "Alex Bennett is still alive." <laughs> <laughs> and when I, you know, when I'd see him places, he would start off with that. That was always his catchphrase for me. 
<laughs> and I always really... felt very proud of that. So I, I'm very happy to still have right. a memory of him. But I used to see him a lot on his bike on like Eighth Avenue. Yeah, I think he lived in Chelsea, right? Now he was. I saw him a lot down here riding around. He, uh, you know, I loved him dearly. And uh, every every New Year's or New Year's Eve, a couple of days before New Year's, my friend Mark Garland used to hold a party and he'd always invite Gilbert and Gilbert would most years would would come. And I always looked forward to those parties because I knew that was the time when I was going to be able to sit down and talk to Gilbert for a while. And we would go off in a corner. Marjorie can attest to this and just be with each other most of the night talking back and forth. And okay. and um, uh, I watched an interview with Bill Maher where he said, well, he, you know, even though he loved Gilbert, knew Gilbert, he didn't really know Gilbert because Gilbert always put up this shell around himself. And and unless uh, uh, he would come out with the comedic character, you didn't find out what the real character was like. And I'm sitting there going, I, he did it every year with me. We would spend two hours in pleasant conversation guy was very intelligent very savvy about politics and things like that probably just a good strategy not to have to deal with bill Maher. <laughs> exactly exactly uh but i found him uh intelligent i like marjorie knows I, I love gilbert dearly you know and i look forward to that every year and i think comedians probably appreciate the fact that he didn't have to be on when he was talking to you you guys were just having a a nice conversation. Yeah, I mean, the only time he had to be on with me is when I was in an interview situation. Right. The rest of the time, I I didn't need to have him be on. But you must have seen the documentary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, right? Uh, it's a great movie. I thought. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't get to know the uh, stealing soap part <laughs> of his life. You know, where where he got collected a lot of soaps soap. from every place he got soap to <laughs> give them to his sister because she liked big soaps. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean it, it, it it's terrific it was just a wonderful um the documentary and uh, you know the fact that it played up dara too because she she's a she saved his life she made it she changed his whole life around you know she mm -hmm. gave him two wonderful kids and and uh and a home she taught yeah. him how to have a home up until then, she said when she first went into his apartment, it was like it was like hoarders. Mm. You know? And she got his life in order. And uh, it, it, uh, he was very lucky to have her. And uh, she was a uh, she was the woman that every guy who ever bumped into her wanted to wind up with. You know, she was that that terrific. You've met her, too. Right, Marjorie? Yeah. Dora, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and this is before they were married. And then one day we find out Gilbert's going with Dara and everybody's going, Dara's going with Gilbert. You know, that's not the kind of guy you'd expect her to wind up with. She she adored him, just adored him. And they had this wonderful relationship. They got married. They had kids and everybody went. Nobody ever expected that would happen to Gilbert. You know, Gilbert was meant to die alone. Uh, and 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 for it to happen to him was just wonderful, just wonderful. Well, didn't she say to me yesterday that his one of his daughters is about thirteen or fourteen? Is just gorgeous, just gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous, drop dead, absolutely. Yeah, if you look at that uh, the thing you sent me, which was the uh, the, the service, the I guess funeral. The, the well, funeral. It wasn't the funeral really. It was a, well, a memorial, a, a celebration memorial. of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't know where it was done. I don't know when it was done because I had heard he died in Florida. That's what I heard, uh, which uh, in my case, if you if I died in Florida, please get my body back to New York as soon. As <laughs> nope. Nope. You there. Nope. <laughs> you, you just leave it there. I'll leave you in Bell Harbor. <laughs> no, Margaret's going to push you off a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well when you die when you die shecky we'll take your ashes and scatter them at sea yeah fine no problem yeah, yeah. Uh, uh along with all your dvds <laughs> not biodegradable they'll be in the dumpster in the driveway no no DVD. I, get them. I, I disagree with you steve bender DVDs are biodegradable. It's just you that's impatient. <laughs> you know, so. But anyway, so 
uh let's see i guess we're getting up on the on an hour here god it's been nice today it's been a yeah. nice little gathering of people uh all uh, as we do, uh, having a nice time with each other and being pleasant with each other. Oh God, can you believe that? Of course, yeah. everybody here, everybody here is to the left. So I mean, what's to what's to argue? So we don't <laughs> no, we don't have to argue. Uh, but anyway, Rick, thank you for being here. You know how I appreciate it. Uh, Steve Bender, wonderful. Say hello to your lady for us, and uh, we hope to see you. And wasn't it? Her birthday the other day was her birthday it. last week. Oh, yeah. wish, wish your belated birthday for us. We will. Thank you, uh, Charlie Wallace. Thank you so much. What does it say on your T-shirt today? It's weird being the same age as old people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Mike and Candy Chisholm. Thank you so much for joining us. Peace and love, everybody. Uh, does that mean loser? That's yeah. peace and love, man. Oh, peace and love. Oh, I love. Oh, that is also loser, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 I keep it away from the forehead to avoid that uh, okay. distinction. Len LaFrisco, always Thanks. nice to see you here. Mandy, you shine up our little goblet here. I don't know what I'm saying. You just <laughs> like having you here. <laughs> she keeps us honest. Shine up our little goblet. You, <laughs> I just I got into a point where I wanted to say shine up something, and I wanted to give a something that you would shine, and I came up with goblet, and I then I gave up. I just gave up doing it. Okay. Help, help, help. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say, Marjorie? Help. 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 Well, help. This for you. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, uh, Vernon Nunn, thank you. And to sign us all off, ladies and gentlemen, the voice that launched a thousand ships, that of Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. See you next week. Okay. Bye. That's it. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs>